Okay, um, welcome back to Real Analysis. Uh, last time, if you recall, wh what did we talk about last time? Metric spaces, good. Uh, we began uh, discussing uh, this concept of uh, how you put a notion of distance on a space of things, right? And so uh, a metric space is really a set together with a notion of distance, okay? Uh, today, what I want to focus on is a very, very important concept. It's the concept of uh, a limit point, and we defined that last time, but let me just remind ourselves uh, what we did. So um, we have the idea of a metric space. So a metric space is really, a, this is a, just a set together with a metric which is a notion of distance. And the metric satisfies three properties. Who remembers what those three properties are? Non-negativity, and it's going to be zero if and only if the two points are the same. So the distance between two points will only be zero if the two points are the same. OK, uh, what, was, uh, what were the, the other two uh, properties? Good, non-negativity. Uh, symmetry, distance between P and Q is the same as distance from Q to P, and the triangle inequality, okay? And that uh, is often the most interesting one to check if you want to verify that something is a metric. Okay, so we've seen some of the usual, uh, the usual metric. Usually when you say Rn, what you really mean is Rn together with the Euclidean metric. Uh, and this Euclidean metric is really what you normally think of as the usual metric. If you don't specify it, you just assume that Rn has the Euclidean metric. And that's uh, given by the absolute value of the difference if it's a real number. And in higher dimensions, it's the square root of the sum of the squares of the differences of the two vectors. Okay? But there are lots of other metrics. We saw some last time. The staircase metric, which basically said instead of square rooting the sum of the squares of the difference differences. Uh, what did you do instead for the staircase metric? Yeah, take the sum of the absolute values of the differences between the coordinates. So that basically measures how far it would take to walk from point A to point B <coughs> if you only used uh, north-south or east-west mo motion, right? Okay, that's a notion of distance. Um, we saw uh, some other examples last time also on other spaces, like um, uh, on the space of genome sequences. You might have a distance that just measures the number of places that the two genome sequences differ. Okay? Lots of sets you might be interested in, and we'll, we'll see many examples of this going forward. But of course, the, conc the most concrete example that you're familiar with is, is uh, Rn. Uh, there are some also some, uh, you know, some exotic metrics. We didn't, I don't think we mentioned this last time, but here's one which might have you uh, think about. Let's uh, endow Rn with a discrete metric. Actually, this, is, this can be done with any space X. It doesn't even have to be Rn. It could be X, any space, any set X. Uh, and the discrete metric is, um, is a very curious metric. Uh, let's see, let me give it a name that looks different from other things. I'll just make this up. How about, um, uh, how about delta? Delta, okay. What's a discrete metric? Well, it, it basically says let's take the difference, uh, let's take the distance between P and Q to be either 0 or 1. It'll be 0 if P equals Q, and it'll be 1 otherwise. Let's see, is that a metric? Dhruv is nodding his head. Why is it a metric? Good, the most interesting one being the triangle inequality. Why does this satisfy the triangle inequality? Good, the, in the triangle inequality, the left-hand side is one and the right-hand side is either one or two if these points are different, 
Okay, so again, easy to check. Okay, so what is the discrete metric doing, morally speaking? It's basically saying what, Willie? Are they the same point or not? And if they're not, we think of them as distance one from each other. Okay? So imagine the real line with the discrete metric. That's basically just a cloud of points that are all, you consider them distance one, right? So somehow this idea of a metric uh, uh, begins to create a geometry, right? Which is different from the usual geometry of the real line, right? The, the, the real line with the Euclidean metric is, looks like this, right? But the real line with the discrete metric looks like a cloud of points, right? An uncountable cloud of points, and those points are all distance one from each other. Yes? You might say, well, how is that possible? Well, it's not sitting in any space, right? We, we, are, we are telling you what the distance is, right? Okay. 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 Good. So um, that's what uh, a metric was. And the, the associated notion, of course, here is uh, uh, once you have a metric is you can start talking about which points are close. And one way to gather close points together is to uh, talk about neighborhoods or open balls. So these are the open balls. That's one way to say it. Another way to say it is a neighborhood, I'll, call, I'll talk about a single open ball, or a neighborhood, I'm abbreviating, so I don't have to write out neighborhood, is basically a set uh, that uh, basically looks like a ball around a point, right? So uh, sometimes we'll write like this, n sub bar of x. It's basically, here's x, here's a ball of radius r, and the neighborhood is this ball. It's all the points inside. Okay, we could write that out. We did that last time. Wrote out the set. It's a set of all x such that the dis sorry set of all y such that the distance from y to x is strictly less than r. Okay, that's why we call it uh, an open ball. It doesn't include r. If I included distance r points, that's all the points on the boundary. Then this would be a what? We call it a closed ball. Okay. But the open ball or the neighborhoods are the things that will be of interest to us. So these are, in some sense, the points that are close together. So they tell us which points are close. Now, if you want to be really ex explicit, you could tell me what the distance is. But if you just gather things that are similar distances, that's sort of what the idea of a ball is. And when you take topology, you'll be basically redoing analysis, just referring to open balls and ignoring or, or, or not working, uh, not referring to a metric. Willie. Yes. Excellent question. Willie's question was, what are the open balls in, uh, for a space endowed with a discrete metric? That's a great question. So you take x with a discrete metric. So in x with a discrete metric, the open balls are, tell me what they are. It could be one point, or it could be all the points. That is, it would be all the points if the, if the radius of the ball is distance one or bigger. Happy with that? Thank you. Bigger than one. And if it's one or smaller, thank you, it, then the ball is going to be just points. That's correct. Our single points if r is less than or equal to 1, thank you, and, uh, or, or everything, or all of x, if r is bigger than 1. Okay, so now Willie was asking, 